Hi guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson, Christopher is going to be teaching you a really cool version of Cripple Creek. Now, as you guys saw and heard in the performance, there's quite a few instruments, but for the purpose of this lesson, we're going to be teaching you it from a duet perspective. So we're going to cover the high G ukulele part plus the baritone part. Now, what's really cool is that the high G ukulele is played using claw hammer technique, and then the baritone ukulele is played with a style that's reminiscent of Carter family picking. Now, if you've never heard of Carter family picking, well, that makes two of us, but I'm going to put a little synopsis in the description box below, and of course, Christopher will cover it in much more detail during the lesson. But I want to take a second just to talk about claw hammer technique, because that's a playing style that is truly unique to itself. Now, if you are brand new and have never done claw hammer technique, or if you need to recap on the fundamentals, jump into our claw hammer course. It'll take you step by step and teach you everything you need to know to play this song with success, because this lesson is going to move forward with the assumption that you know how to do claw hammer technique. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the lessons. So this video is going to be the part one lesson, and it's going to kick off with teaching you that high G part, that claw hammer part. Now, if you want to watch the part two lesson, which will cover the baritone part, you can do so by clicking this link or going to the site rockclass101.com and doing a search for Cripple Creek. Now also on that page will be the tabs that you can print off and follow along with, plus the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. So this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. And last but not least, we're gonna have backing tracks. So we'll have a backing track without the high G part and another one without the baritone part. So whichever one you choose to play, you'll be able to rock out at home with the band. And the backing tracks will be in a few different speeds. So we'll, for example, we'll have 100% speed, but we'll also have 75% speed. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hand it off to Chris to teach you how to play this. Make sure you grab the high G ukulele because we're kicking off with the claw hammer part. Hello friends, this is Christopher Davis Shannon with Rock Class 101 and today I'm going to show you how to play the song Cripple Creek. We're going to play this both in claw hammer style on standard tuned ukulele as well as more of a Carter family style arrangement on baritone uke. Let's get started. A Cripple Creek is a very basic tune. This was written in the mid 1800s or so as a fiddle tune. It was quickly adapted by Appalachian players and then into the bluegrass realm a little later on. But this is only a 16 measure form, which means it's quite short and only has three chords, C, F, and G seventh. So our left hand work will be fairly easy, but I've put some challenges in here for you in the claw hammer part, some things that we haven't looked at in other claw hammer songs on rock class 101, some new rhythms to address. What I've done is really built this up. So the first section that we have here, the first verse is just presenting the main melody very basically. We don't really obscure too much. We don't add ornamentation. This is just the basic melody. And most of this is based around our bum ditty stroke that we've done before but we're actually stripping it back even more. We're not going to do that on every other beat. We're only going to use it occasionally. So we're going to start out just putting down a C major chord, and I want you to finger this C major chord with your pinky, and we'll see why in just a minute. It's going to make our lives so much easier as we go through this piece. Our first downstroke with the fingernail will be on the A string, hitting that C note. And we're going to hit that one more time and then do our bum ditty. So we'll have down, down, up. Right, that's our first two beats. And then we're gonna put our ring finger down directly next to that on the third fret of our E string. Hit that melody note, and then our open E string. And that's our melody. It's our first measure. So let's try the first measure of the melody together with just this one simple movement with the ring finger. One, two, three, four. 
Very good. Now we're going to our F chord and we're going to put down our first finger on the first fret of our E string. Since we're playing in claw hammer style, we're never going to put a finger on the G string. So we can just use one finger to play an F major chord for this entire style. And we're going to play that F as our first melody note. And then we're going to play our open A string and then come back to the C. And we're going to, again, use the ring finger on the third fret because that's going to set us up for the next measure. So we're gonna play that G on the third fret with our ring finger, and then we're going to play our little bum diddy stroke or add the thumb in. So this is what our second measure sounds like. All right, let's try that much together. One, two, three, four. And now as we move on, we can see that this next measure, measure three, is identical to measure one. There's a lot of repetition in this song. But then in the next measure, measure four, instead of going to an F major chord as we did previously, we're going to go to our G7. You see, that's the chord listed here, but if we look at the tab, we don't actually have to voice the entire chord. You can just play the D on the second fret of your C string. We're gonna play open C on beat one and walk it on up. D on the second fret with our second finger and then open E. And then we'll just do a brush stroke coming through our inner two strings. If you haven't hit a whole C chord, it's no big deal. And then our G string on the end. So measure four sounds like this. All right, so let's listen to what the first four measures sound like and then we'll try it together. One, two, three, four. Just try that much of the tune together. One, two, three, four. Very good. Now, as we look ahead, the next three measures we've already done, we reiterate this main, main theme again. And then finally, in measure eight over the G seventh chord, we play something just a little bit different. We're going to walk down instead of walking up. So we're gonna start on the seventh scale degree, the F on our G seventh chord here, and walk it down. We're gonna do F and then D on the second fret of our C string and then open C. So measure eight will sound like this. All right, so let's listen to how the entire A section of this sounds all together, and then this repeats itself with the baritone parts underneath. So we'll play this main theme twice in a row, but let's look at how this all sounds, and then we'll try it together. Two, three, four. Let's try that A section together. One, two, one, two, three, four. So now as we look at the chorus of the tune, there's only two chords here, just C and G seventh, but we have some ornamentation on the melody. So the first thing we're doing is starting out with our second finger on the second fret of the C string on a D, but our first melody note is really an E. What we're doing here is something that's very indicative of the banjo style, which is sliding into this note and then playing the same exact notes on a different string, giving us a little bit of a chorusing effect. So we can see these first few bars are all straight eighth notes, or one and two and three and four and one. So rhythmically, we're playing something very simple, but we're not actually going to attack the string on every beat. We're going to use a series of slides, hammer-ons, and pull-offs to create this rhythm so that our right hand pattern is actually quite a bit easier and more or less our basic bum ditty rhythm that we play in claw hammer style. So we start on the second fret of our C string and we slide directly up to the fourth fret to that E. And then we do our down stroke on the E string and the open G. We come back down to that D again with the mid, just use your middle finger and slide right on back down. And then we're going to pull off to an open C and then a brush stroke coming across a couple strings, and then our bum ditty again. So let's listen to the first measure, and then we'll try it together. Let's try the match. Two, three, four. Good, and we can see the next measure starts out exactly the same. We have that slide from our D to our E. 
but we're going to go up in the melody to a G, but we can't use our open G string because that's reserved for just using the thumb in this style of playing. So we're gonna play that G on the third fret of our E string. Then we're gonna have a brush stroke and then up with the thumb. So let's listen to how the second measure of the chorus sounds. And now the first two together and then we'll try that together. Two, three, four. Let's try those first two measures of the chorus together. One, two, three, four. Good, and if we look at the next measure, that's the same as the first measure. There is so much repetition in this song, it's not even funny. And then we get something a little bit different in the fourth measure here, our little turnaround to get to a G seventh chord. What we're going to do is start putting down that G seventh right at the beginning of the measure. But we're going to play an open C string first. Much as we slid into that E earlier, we're now going to use a hammer on to essentially slide into the D in the G seventh chord on the second fret of our C string. So we get this. So we have open C, hammer on, brush stroke. And then we're right back to our C major chord with our bum ditty. So let's listen to that last measure with the G seventh chord on here. All right, and now let's listen to those first four measures of the chorus. Two, three, four. Now as we look down, much like in the verse, we have a lot of repetition. These next three measures are identical to what we have already done, as is the last measure. We don't even have a different turnaround here. So those four measures, you have the entire basic chorus part. So now let's try the entire chorus together. One, two, one, two, three, four. Now as we get to measure 25, we're back to the verse of the tune, but what we've done here is added a little solo section for you, really more or less just adding a bunch of ornamentation to the basic melody. In most Clawhammer styles, we don't take big crazy solos like we would over a jazz standard. We really are just adding to the main melody of it and playing with that. And with that, I mean, also we're a little bit constrained on this instrument in Clawhammer as to what we really can do harmonically. So we keep it fairly simple. So what we have mostly here are just additions of pull-offs and hammer-ons to change the rhythm a little bit. So we're starting again on our C major chord and much like with the main verse, we want to play this with our pinky so that we have that ring finger ready to play the G on the third fret of our E string that we'll be using in just a moment. So our first measure of the solo, we're going to play our C melody note on the third fret of the A string and then brush stroke, just our basic bum ditty to start this off. But then we're going to put the ring finger down on the G and immediately pull it off and then have our down thumb. So let's listen to that first measure and then we'll try it together. So you can see, although we're not actually attacking anything extra with our right hand, we're just doing the basic bum ditty, we're getting more rhythm out of it by the addition of, of pull-offs in this case and soon hammer-ons. Let's try that first measure of the solo together. Two, three, four. Now the next measure, we're going to an F major chord, remember? But much like we did in the chorus, we're gonna proceed this with an open E, a non chord tone, and then hammer onto that F on the first fret, right afterwards on the next eighth note. And then we're coming down, we're just gonna do a brush stroke, but we're not gonna follow through with the thumb. One of the challenges that I've worked into this is we're not always gonna have that basic bum ditty stroke. We're gonna create much more varied rhythms throughout this solo, because that's how we make things interesting in this style, is by varying the rhythms. So listen to those first two beats. And then we're coming down to our C chord, or our C5, because there's no E in this, it's just C's and G's, and again, with your ring finger, right? We're always using the ring finger for the third fret of the um, E string here. And we've brush stroke and just our thumb on the end. Listen to that one more time, the second measure of the solo. Good, let's try those first two measures together. Two, three, four.
Very good. Now we have one of those hammer-ons on beat one again. We're still on our C major chord, so let's lift up that ring finger, get your pinky down on the third fret of the A string on that C, so we're ready for it. We're going to hit the E, and then hammer directly on back to that third fret on the G. Brush stroke, and then thumb, just our basic stroke. And then we have something new. We're going to slide in from an E flat or a D sharp, depending on how you want to think about it in this context, into the E. Because again, our E is really our melody note here, but we're sliding into it. So we're going three, four. And what I want you to do is make sure you're using your ring finger for this. And this will become very important soon when we add in some more pull-offs and hammer-ons. This is the fingering that we're going to use for every time that we do this three to four on the C string. So let's listen to what this third measure of the solo sounds like. So we have that bum ditty again on the end. Listen to it one more time, and then we'll try it together. You see, I'm just leaving that ring finger there. There's no reason for me to move it, so I'm not going to move it prematurely. Let's try that third measure of the solo together. Two, three, four. Good, and then we're going to our G seventh chord. We don't need to voice the entire thing if we don't want. We're gonna go one open with a pull off and then down to the D on the second fret of the um, C string, and then open C, and our bum ditty on the end. So here's our fourth measure of the solo. Let's try that fourth measure together. Two, three, four. And now let's try the first four measures of the entire solo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good, and now we can move on and we're right back to a C major chord again with our pinky. As always, because if we look ahead in the measure, we're gonna be playing that third fret on the C string and sliding up again, which means we're gonna need the ring finger to play that. So we're gonna hit the C on beat one and then our, do our bum ditty and then do our little slide from D sharp or E flat to E. But this time, instead of having our regular bum ditty stroke, we're doing something different. We're gonna hit the third fret, that G on our E string, and immediately pull off. So we have a slide and a pull off right in a row. So let's listen to that fifth measure of the solo. So we're creating this new rhythm in here using a different technique than we would usually with the right hand. Let's try that, that first measure here again. Two, three, four. Now if we look ahead, the next measure, we're coming up to that F chord and we're immediately gonna hammer on the G on the third fret. So first fret on the E string, hammer on to the third fret. And then we're gonna hit our A as a down stroke with the nail and then our thumb. Again, this measures all eighth notes. This is not just our standard claw hammer style. This is hammer-ons, pull-offs, and slides throughout to create straight eighth notes. So after that open G string, we reiterate a G, but on the third fret of our E string and pull off to open, and then do our slide from three to four. Let's listen to just that measure. This is a tough one. Let's try that together, just this measure. Two, three, four. Now let's put those two measures together, starting back on the C at the beginning of the line. Two, three, four. So we have a lot more movement going on, but we're still hearing that basic melody in here. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back and forth between two Gs, the G on the third fret of our E, and the G that's open with our thumb. So it'll be down, thumb, down, thumb, and then we have our slide from three to four. And then downstroke on the E string with an open G. Let's listen to this next measure. Try that together. Two, three, four. There we have our slide again from three to four. Open E to G, same exact thing we just did. We're just starting on the first beat instead of the third. And then we land on C and do our bum ditty. So our next two measures sound like this.
So let's listen to the back end of the solo, and then we'll try the entire um, verse section of the solo together. So it'll sound like this. Two, three, four. Now let's try the first eight measures of the solo together. One, two, one, two, three, four. The second section of the solo is just doing a solo over top of our chorus part. We'll see if these first two measures we actually know already. This is what we were playing in the beginning. That's what we played in the first section already. So let's try those first two measures together. They should be pretty easy. Two, three, four. Now just something a little bit different. We're gonna go up to the C and we're gonna hit that. Open A and then pull off from three to open on our E string. All right, let's try that together because that's a new rhythm that we have not seen. We have quarter, quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter. Haven't seen that in this tune yet. One, two, three, four. And then look at this, we have our slide again. We're using this all over the place. So we're sliding up, hitting the, a again, the E again, resolving to the C and then our bum ditty. So let's listen to these first four measures. This isn't going to be too bad for y'all. Two, three, four. Let's try that much together. One, two, three, four. Now let's look at the second half of the chorus section of the solo. We're starting with this slide, but then things get a little bit different. So we're gonna do our slide up, hit the E string, and then the G with our thumb, identical to what we did above. But then we're gonna resolve up to the G and we're gonna play it with our first finger on the third fret of the E string this time. So as we look ahead, we're eventually going to be playing a C major. More like this in a moment, just a slightly different voicing. So we'll slide up, hit the E string, brush, stroke, and thumb. Let's try that first measure of this bit together. Two, three, four. Now the first two beats of the next measure are pretty much the same. But then we're going to bar across with our first finger the third fret of our E and our A strings. And we're going to hit just the A string first, then brush, stroke, thumb. All right, so our next measure sounds like this. All right, and let's put those two together now. One, two, three, four. Very good, and then we have this last little pull-off lick to get us out of the solo. We need something a little bit flashy, so these next couple measures are all pull-offs, slides, hammer-ons, and whatever else we can throw at you. So we're starting on the C, with a pull off to our open A. All right, and then we're gonna do our slide from three to four on the C string. And then pull off, move your middle finger now on the third fret on that G on the E string. Pull off to open and then do your slide again. All right, so let's listen to just this measure. There's a lot going on. And then put the first finger down. We're at our G seventh chord now on the F. Pull off to open. Our slide from three to four again. And then we land on the C, brush stroke, thumb. Let me play those last two measures of the solo nice and slowly for you. Two, three, four. And then these last four, so we could put it all in context. Two, three, four. Let's try the second half of the solo now together. One, two, one, two, three, four.
All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed learning this tune so far. Now, where you're at currently is about two thirds of the way done with the high G claw hammer part. So the part two lesson will kick off teaching you that last third, plus it's going to cover the baritone section in its entirety. So if you wanna watch the part two lesson, you can do so by clicking this link or going to the site rockclass101.com and doing a search for Cripple Creek. Now, also on that page will be the tabs that you can print off, keep for your records, plus that really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer so you can hit play, watch that tab scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz. And last but not least are the backing tracks. So regardless of which part you learn, either the high G or the baritone part, we're gonna have backing tracks so you can rock out with the band at home. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed the lesson so far and we'll catch you in the part two one. Take care.